Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are looking at the butterfly method today. I'm going to talk about how it works, is it the best way, and at the end I'm going to talk a little bit more about Zillearn. I, um, I know I talked about it last week um, in our post. I have another lesson up there about what division looks like and what multiplication looks like, so two lessons. I'll explain a little bit of that at the end, so definitely stick around for that, especially if you're a teacher looking for a free tool to help kind of take it beyond the just the YouTube lessons. Or if you're a parent working from home and you want to with your child and you want to again take it beyond just the lesson. Now let's get into our butterfly method. Um, a lot of parents might be watching this because you are now seeing the butterfly method maybe for the first time um, as students are coming home and working with you. We're going to look at what the butterfly method is. We're going to look at if it's the best method and I'm going to show you a way I think is a little bit better. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. The butterfly method is a method that was developed to help with adding fractions. So you get a situation like this where you have one half plus one quarter. And this is the butterfly method. You put two circles around or ovals around like this. We'll move that addition sign up and replace it with a multiplication sign. Now what we're going to do is multiply the numbers that are across from each other. Four times one is four, two times one is two. We'll put in a couple of lines to make sure it looks like a butterfly. Then we multiply the two bottom numbers, two times four, which gives us eight. And then we're going to go ahead and do the math on this. So we have up top, we've got four plus two, that gives us six. On the bottom we have 8, we'll add on that little part to make it look like a butterfly, and we end up with 6 eighths. At this point, every good teacher is going to tell the students you need to simplify your fraction. So simplifying a fraction is part of the steps for no matter which method you use. At this point we're going to simplify this fraction. To do that you list the factors of 6 and the factors of 8 you find the greatest common factor and you'll divide the top and bottom of the fraction by that number giving you your final answer in simplest form. That's the butterfly method in a nutshell. I'm going to show you another couple of questions with the butterfly method. First off, um, this question is an example of when the butterfly method is at its best. This is the best case scenario for the butterfly method. Watch what happens here. We put the circles on, we move that addition sign up and replace it with multiplication. Now we're gonna multiply two times two. So those are diagonals, give us four. Five times one gives us five. Let's draw on the little antennae. And now we multiply five times two on the bottom to get 10, that will be our denominator. And now we just add four plus five up top gives us nine. The 10 remains the 10 on the denominator. Again, this is best case scenario. What ends up happening is you have a fraction in lowest or simplest terms. It's set. It's done. Um, there are cases where the butterfly method makes a little bit of a mess, and I'm going to show you an example of that here. This is the butterfly method with 2 fifths plus 5 tenths. We're going to circle, move the addition sign up, multiplication down. 10 times 2 is 20, 5 times 5 is 25, let's put in those little antenna, and then we multiply the denominators, 5 times 10 to get 50, and we'll end up with 45 fiftieths. We get that by adding 20 plus 25 up top, and the 50 remains the same on the bottom. Now we have to simplify this, this, this fraction, and simplifying it means listing the factors, of 45 and then listing the factors of 50, finding the greatest common factor and dividing both the top and bottom by that greatest common factor to get our answer in lowest form or simplest form. So this, you can see it's, it's kind of um, a little bit of a mess when you get to numbers like 45 and 50, right? We're getting into large size numbers, um, and that's when this butterfly method can become a little bit tricky. I'm going to show you another example 
where it becomes kind of a complete mess and these fractions aren't even that large the bigger the numbers you get the bigger of a mess the butterfly method is going to become and the harder it is for students to simplify at the end so let's go ahead and take a look at the butterfly method we'll put the circles on move that addition sign up multiply 14 times 2 is 28, 7 times 3 is 21. Let's put in the antenna. Now we're going to multiply 7 times 14 to get 98, and we'll draw that in. So you can see already we're dealing with larger numbers, 28, 21, and 98. Those all came because we had 14 in there as kind of a bigger number. But students, when they're first learning fractions, are going to see fractions like this. So this isn't an unrealistic question. And in fact, um, it's, it's kind of a low number because it's only one really one number bigger than 10 out of the four numbers that you start with the fractions. So this is when the butterfly method starts to fall apart because we end up with these large numbers um, where we have to start factoring or simplifying large numbers, which is challenging for kids but we are going to do it and we will make it happen. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll list all the factors of 49. There's actually not that many of them. We'll list all the factors of 98. Again, there's not too many of them, um, but we are getting into large factors, 14, 49, 98. Then we'll discover the greatest common factor, which is 49, and we'll divide the top and bottom of that fraction by 49 to get our final answer of 1 half. The butterfly method, that's how it works, all right? So I wanna talk a little bit about my philosophy on math and on education in general. So this may be boring for just a second, but I'll try and keep it quick. If you memorize a bunch of tricks that only work in a specific circumstances, you're not gonna be able to apply those tricks outside of that circumstance. So in almost every case, I teach students so that they can use it later. That's my philosophy on, on math instruction and other instruction. If I can teach you something that will always work and be consistently helpful and you will be able to understand what you're doing, I think that that's a better way. So let's talk about the better way for adding fractions. If you follow these four steps, finding the least common denominator, converting the fractions, adding numerators, and simplifying, you'll be able to work with every type of addition or subtraction fraction that you come across, every one. Um, it really is four steps. So if it's that simple, why do we need the butterfly method? Why do we use the butterfly method? And the, the answer for that is pretty easy. To each of these steps often takes more than one lesson. So you would have to spend a lesson teaching finding the least common denominator. You would have to teach a lesson showing how to convert fractions or make equivalent fractions. You would have to show at least one lesson on simplifying fractions, but again, step four you used in the butterfly method anyway. Step four, every good teacher asks their students to simplify fractions right? You always will be simplifying fractions. You need to know that skill and you need to practice it. So that's kind of the same in both of them. But again, it takes a little bit more time. If you can draw a butterfly, you can do that in one class and students will be like, oh, this is pretty easy. Um, teaching this way often takes more time, but I'm going to argue that it's an investment of time that's actually worth it. So I'm going to actually do these same fractions that we just did with the butterfly method. And I'm going to argue that if you learn this method, not only will you be able to add any set of fractions, no matter how large they become, but this skills that you learn will transfer to all of these subjects. Simplifying fractions, equivalent fractions, subtracting fractions, comparing fractions, least common multiple, greatest common factor. All of those skills are used within this method. If you learn the butterfly method, that skill will transfer to absolutely zero other things, and you will still need to use some of these to be able to do it anyway. So I'm going to argue that the butterfly method is a total waste of everyone's time and should be thrown out, <laughs> but also I'm gonna show you a way that I think is a little bit better 
and I don't think it's that much more complicated. It takes a little bit of work up front, but once you get it, it's definitely worth the investment of time. Let's do it. We're going to add these same exact fractions that we did in our previous examples, and this is how to do it. First step, find our least common denominator. To find the least common denominator, you list the two denominators. The denominator is the bottom of the fraction. So you're going to list out 2 and 4. And you're, what you're finding here is multiples. So we're multiplying 2 times 1, 2 times 2, and we're listing them out. With 4, I'm going to list the multiples, 4 times 1. And that's where I stop, because 2 and 4 have a common multiple of 4. As soon as you get a common number between these two, you don't have to list multiples anymore. That is going to be our common denominator. So we need to make both fractions have the same denominator. And this is a skill students will use when they're converting fractions or finding equivalent fractions. So we look at our first fraction, 1 half. What do we need to do to that to make the denominator equal to 4. We'll multiply it times 2. Whatever we do to the bottom of a fraction, we do to the top of a fraction. So there we have it. We're multiplying 2 times both the top and bottom. And that gives us these two fractions, 2 over 4 and 1 over 4. We add the, the numerators. Like it says in step 3, denominator remains the same. Now we have 3 over 4. I'm going to simplify. To simplify, you do what we did in the butterfly method. We list the factors of the 3, we list the factors of 4, and we look for common factors. If there are no common factors, we have our fraction in simplest form. That's it. Question 2, 2 fifths plus 1 half. Remember, this is the one that was the best for the butterfly method. The butterfly method gave us this answer in simplest form right from the get-go. So let's see. If this is the easiest for the butterfly method, does it make it like a lot harder to do it in this method? Let's take a look. We find our least common denominator by listing multiples of our denominators, 5 and 2. In this case, we're listing out uh, multiples until we get to 10. So there is a bit of a long list there, especially with 2. I would argue that practicing multiples is, is a good way to remember multiplication tables. But either way, it is a little bit more work on this step. Now we're going to convert our fractions. To do this step, you need to change both fractions to having the denominator of 10. That means we're multiplying 2 times the top and bottom of the first fraction, 5 times the top and bottom of the second fraction. So that is some extra work, right? Now we add the numerators. We get 9 out of 10. And we would simplify. Again, simplifying is the step that we do with every fraction. So it's not really saving any time. Um, one way or another. There are no common factors, so we have our answer in lowest form. So you can see with this example, there is a little bit more work to do using this method than the butterfly method. But remember, this is the ideal example for the butterfly method. Now let's get into ones that were a little bit more messy for the butterfly method, and you'll start seeing that, that this method just kind of is, is incredible. We find our least common denominator by listing multiples well, until we find a common multiple, the lowest one. Then we convert our fractions by multiplying. So in this case, we do need to multiply the first fraction times 2 on both the top and bottom. That gives us 4 tenths plus 5 tenths. And when we add them, the numerators will get 9 tenths. I'm going to list out the, the factors just to show you there are no common factors here. So that means that this fraction is in lowest terms, all right, or in simplest form. There we go. So this one here was a little bit easier using this method than using the butterfly method because the steps at the end for simplifying were a lot easier. The numbers were a lot smaller. Now let's get into this one, um, the one that made 49 over um, 98. All right, we're dealing with huge numbers. We do it this way, we're not going to see those kinds of numbers. Let's look. Um, finding our least common denominator, we list the multiples of our denominator. That was pretty easy. We've got a common denominator of 14. We're going to convert the first fraction into having a denominator of 14. 
by multiplying two times the top and bottom. That will give us 4 out of 14 and 3 out of 14. When we add the numerators, we get 7 out of 14. Now this is the first example that I gave where you actually do have to simplify even though you use this method. And I wanted to do an example that was like that. When you do this method, it doesn't stop you from having to simplify. It just makes it so that the numbers are a lot smaller when you do simplify. All right. You're not dealing with 49 um, and 98, right? You're dealing with 7 and 14. And that's one of the huge advantages to doing it this way. All right. So 7 will be our common denominator. We divide both numbers by 7 and get our fraction in lowest terms, which is 1 half. So there we go. A couple of things to remember. Practice is good. This is extra practice. Doing it um, in the method I showed gives you extra practice on least common denominator, greatest common factor. It gives you practice on finding multiples and finding factors. It gives you practice on all of those things that you really need to have moving forward. Also, I think if you teach the skills, students will grow. If you teach shortcut one-time use tricks, students can't grow past those one-time tricks. I hope that video was helpful for you, and I want you to stick around for my quick um, plug here for Zillearn. Zillearn, um, like I was saying earlier, is um, a program that takes math videos and goes beyond just your regular video. So although I do have videos um, on Zillearn, um, what division looks like and what multiplication looks like, what I also have is tables, um, visuals. We've got uh, an assignment at the end with math in real life. We've got practice problems with real-time feedback that students can get. So this is taking the regular math lessons that you're getting on YouTube and taking them to the next level. So I'm going to put the link in the video description for you. I want you to check those, that out, and I hope it's a helpful tool for you, especially for those two videos I put up, but also there are lots of other teachers and instructors putting videos on to learn that you can check out. A good advantage of that as well is that all of the lessons are screened before they are published and they're free access to you. So I hope that you can check that out and enjoy those videos. Have a wonderful day, guys.